A Florida woman was fired from her job as a bridge tender after authorities deemed her criminal responsible for a February death of a 79-year-old woman. Her supervisor, who happened to be her boyfriend's mother, was also relieved of her position on Tuesday, March 22nd. Both women violated the company's safety operations procedures after being arrested and charged with one count of manslaughter by culpable negligence in the death of Carol Wright on Thursday, March 17th. Artissa LaFay Polk, age 43, received a written statement from her employees letting her know that she was no longer employed by Florida Drawbridge Incorporated. Officers have gathered evidence pointing to Polk being responsible for the drawbridge unexpectedly rising Sunday, February 6th, which caused Wright to fall from Royal Park Bridge in West Park Beach. Investigation completed by the West Palm Beach Police Department discovered that Polk lied to police initially about the circumstances surrounding Wright's death. Locating surveillance video and deleted text messages between the woman and her supervisor, Kathy Harper, regarding how to cover up her role in the senior citizen's untimely demise. Wright's family has secured legal representation to seek justice for the deceased grandmother who passed one year shy of being an octogenarian. Attorney Lance Ivey named Polk as the sole person culpable for Wright's death. He stated that the woman made a trip to Palm Beach bookstore and upon her return decided that she would take the bridge back to her home. Quote, she legally and lawfully gets on the bridge and without any expectation, unbeknownst to her, the bridge tender pushes the button that would ultimately turn out to be a slow mental and physical passing. When Polk allegedly pressed the button for the drawbridge to go up, Wright was already 10 feet from the barrier's arms as police report states, and she was unable to make a successful retreat. A West Palm Beach police spokesperson stated that she was walking her bike from east to west and had almost reached the furthest point of the movable span when it went up. He later stated that the woman tried to hang on. There were bystanders nearby who tried to help her, but tragically, she fell five or six stories below where she passed, landing on concrete. Despite those efforts, the woman was not able to hold on and she fell to the concrete below. From where the victim was to where she landed was approximately five or six stories or about 50 to 60 feet. The incident happened around 1 p.m. and fire rescue technical rescue teams closed down the bridge for almost six hours as rescue professionals retrieved Ms. Wright's body. As the team worked to find the woman's remains, the two women were sending text messages to each other about how to frame Polk's hand in the incident. An affidavit prepared by detectives noted that Harper told Polk in the text to lie during her interview with law enforcement about checking the bridge house balcony for pedestrians. When Polk was interviewed, she did as she was instructed by her boyfriend's mother to lie to the officers. She fabricated a story saying that she walked into the balcony to do a visual check of the bridge. The woman stated that she checked for vehicles or pedestrians before she opened the bridge. At the end of the day, her life was done. Um, she decided that she wanted to lie. She listened to somebody else. And she is basically essentially the fall guy. She's the one that basically pressed the button that didn't do the job that she was supposed to do. Like I said, all of it seems quite suspicious how everything took place. Everybody involved needs to be uh, uh, very much looked at and scrutinized. But like I said, at the end of the day, she did it. She did it. Why out of everything in life would you decide to sit up there and do that knowing the fact that this woman was crossing the bridge? You could have waited. Traffic could have waited. But yet you decided to go against common sense and logic and you wanted to commit to this act that inevitably led to the loss of life. And now facing a lawsuit, more than likely the city is going to face a lawsuit and you know many more things will transpire because of this like i said it, it's it's 100 crazy and ridiculous that you have people who are in the line of work right where they have to operate machinery or equipment of such a magnitude that very easily it can inevitably end up taking somebody's life 
And yet these same people are put in this position of power, knowing the fact that they realistically don't care about another person's life or inevitably what happens to them. And that they are willing to sit up here and lie directly to police and possibly potentially lie directly on the stand in front of the judge, in front of lawyers and to juries and in front of families just to sit up there and save themselves from the fact of taking acknowledgement and responsibility of the action that they decided to commit to. Wow. Wow. Like I said before, you know, you can't help some people. There's a lot of people out here that's just not going to make it. And this woman is clearly one of them. She decided to do something against all known common sense and logic. And she just committed to it. And I guess she thought that she was going to get away with it and that, you know, nothing serious is going to happen, you know, directly from it. But it did. It did. And it's always amazing that after the fact that these people commit to such actions of, you know, inevitably taking somebody's life and ruining families, separating families, that they decide that they want to cry. Who exactly are you crying for? Because it's not the loss of life. It's not the life that you took. So who exactly are you crying for? Where exactly are those Hollywood Oscar Emmy type of tears? Where are those really coming from? Because it really can't be for yourself because during the midst of it, you weren't crying when you were pressing that button. You weren't crying when that bridge was going up and you weren't crying when you saw everything go down and you know exactly what happened. You weren't crying for yourself then. So who specifically are you crying for? It's not the victim <laughs> and it's for sure not yourself. So who? Is that your way of what, in a sense, trying to say that you're sorry and remorseful? Like I said, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't fit. It doesn't work. Like I said, at the end of the day, you're just going to have a lot of people that don't want to listen. And you're going to have a lot of people that's going to get left behind and a lot of people that's just not going to make it.